the uh, as realtors, you, you probably uh, have a unique and great uh, message that <coughs> is uh, seldom able uh, to be used uh, in uh, many of the communities and jurisdictions that I've seen uh, over over time. Uh, in, in Cherokee County, uh, you can live anywhere. Uh, you can have a, sort of a semi-rural uh, environment. Uh, you can be very cosmopolitan if you'd like to. Uh, you can be on a farm. You can have a condo. Uh, I mean, it's you know pretty much all over the map. But the really good news is it doesn't matter what your particular preference is in terms of neighborhoods. Every neighborhood has an unbelievably great school. Uh, and uh, I think that's a, a powerful message for, for realtors. Uh, the, uh, uh, you, you don't have to basically uh, be in the, the middle of Town Lake uh, in order to have a great school. Uh, Bascom is a great school. So is Ball Brown. Uh, Clayton is a great school. Uh, so is Oak Grove. Uh, we have uh, made every effort uh, over the last 15 years uh, to make that happen uh, and to you know, it's very easy to spend all of your money in the areas where people are just gravitating toward your community. Uh, it is a very different kind of challenge to make sure that uh, the existing communities all get uh, the same type of uh, attention. And uh, that's why we have not only built new schools in order to accommodate uh, people that are moving here and want to take advantage of a wonderful way of life, uh, but we have replaced uh, aging schools uh, so that uh, the kids in neighborhoods uh, where the parents have been there for generations, where the, the, uh, their families have been there for generations, uh, can also have great brand new schools with state-of-the-art technology uh, and the best education uh, possible. The, uh, when I got here, uh, I remember there, there was an article in the newspaper, this was a little over 15 years ago, uh, referring to Cherokee County as the gooberest county in Georgia. Now, I don't think that was a compliment. Uh, the, uh, I, I would suggest to you that uh, there is, uh, I'd be very surprised if there's anybody in Georgia uh, that would refer to Cherokee County uh, in that way today. Uh, and uh, certainly from a standpoint of our school system, uh, when I got here, uh, just about every th idea that I had uh, was met uh, with uh, initially uh, the uh, comment or retort from uh, others whether on the board or you know on staff, well, uh, what are they doing in Cobb? You know, what are they doing in Fulton? Uh, and uh, quite frankly, I could care less what they're doing in Cobb or Fulton. Uh, I don't think you get better. Uh, I don't think you are a leader uh, when you're waiting for somebody else to tell you what to do and to show you how to do it. So for 15 years, we've not been waiting for somebody else to show us what to do. And while we certainly have all the respect in the world for our uh, neighbors in Cobb and Fulton and Forsyth and wherever else in the metro Atlanta area uh, people are, uh, we uh, believe that uh, you know, our staff is second to none, uh, our teachers are second to none, our principals are second to none, and our schools are second to none. Uh, I think that's an important uh, uh, dimension uh, of, of the school system, and certainly uh, it would be a hallmark of most uh, private sector organizations that lead as well. Uh, the average SAT score for our class of 2013 is 1567, uh, and some of this data is on a handout that uh, you've uh, been given uh, uh, for your uh, use. Uh, that's the highest average in Metro Atlanta and the second highest in the state of Georgia. Uh, our SAT score margin over the national average is 69 points. Now, a lot of people are, are uh, very fond of saying that uh, Georgia is last in SAT scores. But if Georgia was Cherokee, it would be about 13th uh, in the nation. So uh, Georgia may be last, but Cherokee is definitely not last. Uh, in fact, uh, on SAT, which is probably arguably one of the most important measures of quality in terms of what's happening with kids that are going on to college, uh, we're first. And we've been first for the last uh, 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 three years. The uh, class of 2013 tied with the class of 2012, also with the highest ACT scores uh, in our history, and again outscored both national and state averages by very significant margins. The, uh, uh, most of you uh, are aware of the fact that we opened a brand new ET Booth Middle School, uh, built it right behind the existing facility, and uh, are in the process of repurposing uh, what was being used as Chapman Intermediate 
uh, in order for the classrooms there to be used uh, as additional space for Etowah High School. Uh, the, uh, uh, in terms of our five-year facility plan, uh, the brand new Teasley Middle School is under construction. Uh, if you have not been north of Riverstone, uh, uh, take a ride uh, over there uh, uh, on your way to the, uh, to the bluffs. Uh, and uh, what you'll see is a uh, brand new uh, middle school going up uh, uh, just about uh, maybe a, an eighth of a mile before you get to uh, the Canton First Baptist Church facility. The, uh, uh, we are replacing the athletic field houses and the girls softball field at Cherokee High School, uh, which is long overdue, uh, in order to keep uh, Cherokee, uh, very much again with that same philosophy, uh, to keep them competitive. You know, uh, you can't have uh, a brand new school with all the amenities uh, and then an old school that needs to be uh, basically renovated or repurposed uh, and expect that people aren't going to notice and that people aren't going to make judgments about the quality uh, of education uh, in those two institutions. Uh, we are, uh, uh, the board has just approved at their last meeting uh, construction of a uh, new replacement Dean Rusk Middle School. Uh, and some people might ask, well, you know, why are we continuing to build over there? Uh, don't we have Creek View? Yeah, it's loaded. Uh, Creekland? Yeah, it's loaded. Uh, both overcrowded already. Uh, and by the way, Sequoia and Dean Rusk are pretty much uh, at their limit. And uh, I guess the smart money would suggest that probably uh, all of that land uh, from Sequoia uh, to the east of the Fulton Line uh, eventually is going to be houses. Uh, and uh, basically the people that live in those houses are going to want to have quality schools and uh, so uh, we need a new Dean Rusk uh, that will accommodate uh, uh, more kids uh, and uh, uh, Sequoia will need to be able to use the repurposed Dean Rusk facility as additional classroom space uh, for the high school program uh, as well. The, uh, uh, you heard uh, a minute ago uh, about our academies initiative. <coughs> Uh, I frankly, uh, uh, the, uh, our focus on science, technology, engineering, and math uh, is a response to the problem that we have nationally uh, and internationally in this country, uh, which is we do not prepare our fair share of scientists, uh, technologists, engineers, and mathematicians. Uh, and if you want uh, to put an exclamation point on that, uh, you need to have a kid in graduate school at an Ivy League school or uh, even at Georgia Tech. Uh, and what you'll find is that the people that are studying in those fields and getting advanced degrees, that about 90% of them uh, were not born here uh, and are not going to stay here after they graduate. They're going to go back to wherever they came from uh, because uh, we also have uh, what, in my opinion, is not a very enlightened policy of sending people packing after they get their PhDs. Uh, rather than making it easy for them to stay and to add to our gross national product. So uh, uh, bottom line is uh, you can't all of a sudden expect kids that are graduating from high school uh, to have an interest in and to have that interest nurtured uh, in those fields. You've got to start as early as elementary school. And that's what our STEM program is all about. Uh, some of you uh, basically uh, accompanied others uh, on the uh, Get On Board with CCSD bus tour. Uh, and uh, visited Clark Creek Elementary School. And uh, it, in all likelihood, you know, uh, if you were paying attention, it blew you away. Uh, you looked at that and said, oh my God, you know, what's going on here? These kids are basically uh, building uh, robotic systems uh, that are doing things that uh, you just couldn't even imagine. Uh, if you had any question about, you know, whether or not kids are learning the things that they need to these days, or that education is quite a different thing than it was 20 or 30 years ago, uh, then uh, I would uh, strongly encourage you to visit you know, one of our STEM academies. In fact, uh, we'd be glad to offer uh, the opportunity for to, you to have one of your meetings at one of our STEM academies or at one of our brand new schools. We will absolutely take you up. <coughs> that, would be, that would be great, and uh, Barbara Jacoby, who's our Director of Community Relations, would certainly facilitate that for you. The, uh, in terms of the academies, we've got four elementary schools now that are focusing on STEM, and we've got two that are focusing on fine arts. And eventually, our hope, when we get to scale, and scale means about 50,000 kids, we're about 10,000 away, uh, at that point, uh, we will have enough kids to be able to warrant uh, creating a, a high school for the performing and visual arts. 
Uh, we ex expect to do that cooperatively with Reinhardt University. Wow. Uh, and uh, they have uh, basically committed their cooperation uh, and uh, potentially the use of the Fellaini uh, Performing Arts Center uh, in order to make that happen. Uh, but think about the wonderful opportunities that uh, in the school s systems where I've been superintendent in the past, in Houston, uh, in Miami, uh, and in uh, uh, Fort Lauderdale, in Broward County, uh, we had schools of the arts, you know, very much like fame in New York, uh, same type of thing. Uh, and uh, can you imagine the draw uh, that that would have uh, in, in, in Cherokee County? Uh, with enough talented kids to be able to uh, come and uh, get that kind of a, of a learning experience. Now, you don't need a football team for a program like that, right? So you don't need a conventional high school. Uh, the, the types of activities the kids are involved in more are related to dance and to, you know, uh, other things that uh, don't necessarily uh, call for there to be a, a traditional uh, uh, high school program. Uh, and uh, so uh, the, the planning for this uh, an anticipates that this would be a unique model. The, uh, the newest academy that we have created uh, basically this year is we refer to as our C3 Academy. This enables uh, Cherokee students to make cyber connections to learning. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the academy is uh, focused uh, initially on offerings at the middle and high school levels, uh, the course options, uh, for kids, and this is, these are available to all of our middle and high school kids. Uh, our digital online courses, which are web-based in a lab setting facilitated by a classroom teacher who monitors and assists <coughs> the students. Uh, the uh, virtual online courses is the second option. These are web-based with a certified online teacher who provides direct teacher-to-student interactive instruction, collaborative opportunities, and transcript grades. And uh, the Georgia Online Clearinghouse, which provides students and parents with uh, information and access to academic and career-oriented courses aligned to state standards through a list of online providers. The, uh, another uh, a recent component added to uh, the overall quality of our system has been the creation of the Cherokee County Educational Foundation. Barbara Jacoby, uh, probably uh, more than anyone on my staff, uh, has been fundamentally involved uh, in the uh, planning uh, development and ultimately uh, establishment and implementation of the foundation. It was founded last fall uh, as a charitable nonprofit organization dedicated to supporting the students and staff of the Cherokee County School District by promoting teaching and learning and celebrating uh, achievements. It seeks funding and resources to enrich uh, the school system uh, and basically uh, has had a, already a wide variety of options that have, be that have become available for students and staff uh, as a result of their work, uh, including but not limited to grants for schools, uh, grants for teachers and other staff, grants for students for academic and after school extracurricular programs, and support for specific school district initiatives such as uh, the Cherokee Academies. Uh, the foundation already has awarded more than $9,700 in grants uh, to CCSD schools with another 10,000 to be awarded this month. Uh, the uh, businesses and individuals can support the foundation uh, through partnerships and uh, again the, the person to contact in that regard uh, would be Barbara Jacoby. Uh, again we've given you a cheat sheet here on uh, some of the major achievements uh, of the system. Uh, if uh, we know that uh, certainly right after you know what kind of a community is this and uh, what kind of houses are these and uh, what about the quality of the community and whatnot, that, that right up there with those kinds of questions are uh, what kind of schools do you have? Uh, some of you uh, have a, you know, a better and clearer understanding of, of the schools. Uh, people like Becky Babcock, who served on the school board, thankfully, uh, for several years, uh, she really knows uh, about the schools. And I'm sure uses that to you know, a great advantage in terms of making sure that, uh, uh, that her customers uh, know about the schools. Uh, and uh, the, uh, so uh, from, from our standpoint, uh, we think the system is moving in the right direction. Uh, we uh, uh, think that we're probably uh, back on the cusp of uh, uh, another uh, uh, bit of momentum as it relates to uh, growth. Uh, it's a little slower coming than uh, we thought it would be, but uh, trust me, uh, uh, it's just a matter of time. Uh, there's only so much land in the great in the metropolitan Atlanta area. Uh, there's only so many places where you know uh, you can grow, uh, and uh, in a, a community like Cherokee County, uh, where you have all the things that you would hope 
uh, going for you <coughs> as a community and great schools. Uh, there simply is uh, no reason why people wouldn't want to move here from other parts of Metro Atlanta, from ar across the state, uh, from around the country. Uh, and uh, actually, in my view, that has added to the richness uh, of our school system and our community. Uh, the fact that we have such wonderful diversity. Uh, and uh, not just people that, were, that grew up here uh, and whose families have been here for generations, but people from all over the country that bring all kinds of perspective, uh, all kinds of cultural uh, differences and strengths, uh, and that make us uh, the kind of community that, uh, that we are. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll take a couple questions. Hopefully I didn't uh, wear out my welcome. No, you're, you're fine. Okay. We can listen for a long time. <laughs> yes. Are there, and, and except for the Performing Arts Center, which you mentioned, are there any other plans in the next five years or so of starting up a new high school? We Can really, uh, uh, when I got here, uh, we were in that phase where lots of <coughs> starter homes and other homes were being built. Lots of people were moving to Cherokee County with small children, uh, wanting to, you know, have a suburban lifestyle and uh, what have you. Uh, we were, uh, uh, for the most part, our elementary schools uh, were already uh, critically overcrowded. And, unfortunately, many years uh, before I got here, uh, the community and the school board had made a decision that we were going to keep sixth graders in elementary school. Uh, and so uh, it, that made matters even worse because now you were housing not just K to five but also sixth graders, and it meant that you couldn't take advantage of some of the wonderful opportunities that are available to kids only when they get into a middle school environment. So uh, our first uh, strategy, based on the uh, uh, a uh, uh, blue ribbon committee that was put together and chaired by Floyd Fellaini, the former uh, president emeritus of, uh, of, of Reinhardt uh, College at the time. Uh, and which included uh, leadership from throughout the county. Uh, basically, uh, we uh, uh, started our building program uh, by building new elementary schools. Uh, we, uh, uh, by the time we uh, pretty much had uh, uh, built enough classrooms to accommodate the kids who were here and many of the kids who were coming at the elementary level, uh, our high schools uh, were uh, uh, basically uh, critically overcrowded. Uh, since the middle schools only had two grades, uh, they were able to last longer, you know, in that kind of uh, environment. Uh, and so the next stage was high schools, and we built several new high schools, as you know. Uh, uh, most recently, we have shifted uh, to uh, meet the needs of our middle school kids, and that is why uh, the brand new, uh, you know, all of our middle schools basically either are new or, ha or have been replaced, uh, so that we can accommodate uh, not just more kids, but kids in three grades, as opposed to two grades. Uh, we are probably, uh, again, uh, depending upon uh, the, the way in which growth uh, re resumes, uh, we're probably looking uh, over the next uh, uh, two or three, four years uh, at building uh, a few elementaries uh, where we need them. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, uh, there will likely, uh, by, by that time, uh, be a need for uh, at least one more high school, uh, maybe two. Uh, but I don't see that happening in the next, uh, you know, uh, two, three, or four years. I think that's probably five to seven years out. Yes? There's one project that's a, a repurposing project that would include high school. Would you like me to yeah, sure. take you over? Um, as part of our Cherokee Academies initiative, we have a college and career academy project that we're working on. You may have heard this referred to in the media in the past year or so as a technical high school. Um, what we're looking at doing is when the new Teasley opens, we're going to repurpose the old Teasley campus. Uh, the first part of that project is going to be relocating Ace Academy, which right now is in Holly Springs. It's in the old Holly Springs Elementary School, if y'all are familiar. It used to be called Crossroads. ACE Academy is our alternative day high school program, and there's also a, some middle school students who go there. Right now we have more students who want to go to that school, who want to choose to go to that school, than we can serve in that building. We have students who want to be able to work at their own pace and to move on when ready, but because of that building size and the parking lot size, we can't accommodate them all. So when we move that program over to Teasley Middle School, which will happen within the next school year, uh, we'll be able to accommodate more students there. We're also looking at the opportunity to expand into night school at that campus. 
Right now we have one night high school, Polaris. school, Polaris, which is at Woodstock High School. And not all of the students who would be interested in that program can get there because of transportation needs or schedules. You know, a lot of the students who go to Polaris work full time during the day. And there's not enough time for them to get from work to those classes. So if we offer an opportunity for those <coughs> students to take evening classes, you know, at their own pace, move on when ready, in Canton, we think that we'll have more students who are able to achieve a high school diploma that way. The third part of that project is to offer classes at that campus that are technical in nature, that are technology oriented, so that students who are in an alternative setting will be able to not only achieve a high school diploma, but certification, so that they'll be able to leave high school and immediately get a job in a field like HVAC or in welding. At the same time, we want to offer a lot of computer classes, programming classes, because some of these students who the traditional high school schedule uh, doesn't appeal to are actually really bright. They just don't feel challenged in the traditional setting. And so by being able to get their core classes at the pace that they want, maybe take advanced program programming classes, those students may be able to get Microsoft certification and go right to work, or they might be able to go into a technical university, like a, a Southern Polytechnic or whatever that ends up being called with the merger. Some of the some parents are confused. Uh, going back to the Ozzie and Harriet days when some of you aren't old enough to remember. Thank you. Who? Mike Mike Bird remembers. The, uh, uh, <coughs> the, they're confused because the kid that they thought was the successful kid went to UGA and a year later lost their Hope Scholarship and now is home working at Waffle House. And uh, their kid that really didn't like school very much and that uh, started a business or you know works in a trade or whatnot is knocking everybody's socks off and, and making you know good money and getting married, having kids and whatnot. And so parents are confused because the kid that they thought is the good kid, you know, doing the, the right stuff, uh, is sort of a semi failure. And the kid that is pursuing this other stuff is doing very well. And uh, it's a wake up call. You know, for us as uh, parents and, and uh, as, as, a, as a community, that uh, one size doesn't fit all. Uh, you know, we, we have given the kids the idea that the only way you can be viewed as successful in life and in, in our country is if you can become a news anchor or something. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and, and I'm not against news anchors. It's a wonderful thing. You know, but uh, we also need engineers. You know, uh, we need people that can weld. We need people... Uh, that can uh, uh, manage trades, uh, people that can open businesses that provide, you know, support for that kind of thing, and not just depend upon immigrants, you know, uh, uh, to, to do a, a, a lot of that work. And, uh, you know, when you talk to parents about that, they automatically are, like, turned off. You know, it's like, oh, well, you know, I'm not my kid. You know, that's somebody else's kid. But frankly, uh, you know, anybody that's had more than one kid knows that they are not the same. You know, they have different interests. And I think as public schools... Uh, and as high schools, uh, we really uh, have not, uh, what we've done is cater to the parents that want all the kids to go to UGA. Uh, and, and we have not uh, recognized that there's a lot of kids that, you know, really a four-year research university is not the best option. And nobody likes to hear that. You know, it's always somebody else's kid that that's okay for. Uh, but uh, that is, a, again, a part of what we want to do with our technical high school. We want to make it okay for a kid to think about owning a plumbing supply business, okay, or working out of their home. You know, a lot of the, the dem demographers and researchers tell us that uh, in the next century, uh, about half the people that work uh, will not drive to the factory, you know, uh, in order to do their job, right? Uh, many of them will be able to work right from home. Uh, there are people out here who watch that house owners, right? Mm -hmm. You notice how many of the people live in Hawaii, but they work, you know, all over the world or whatnot? I mean, there are opportunities that are now available to people that were never, you know, uh, uh, available before. <clears throat> Through technology, uh, it's, a, it's a very different thing. Of course, the question for us becomes, well, how do we educate kids to those options? You know, how do we get them to have the mindset uh, where they really are exploring, uh, 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 you know, the various options that are out there, as opposed to just assuming that, okay, i got to be a doctor, i got to be a teacher, i got to be a lawyer, God forbid, uh, or, you know, <laughs> Last question. Yes, sir. Um, when do you think you're going to reach that point where you have 50,000 students? 
Uh, we are at uh, right about 40,000 now. <coughs> I would say that uh, uh, in five to seven years, we ought to be knocking on the door for 50,000. And secondly, thank you. Thank you. Who would have thought that somebody with a vowel and the their name would be here for 15 oh, years? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> One more. Okay, what do you think the time frame is to extend the STEM program? Because now most of the schools go to the fifth grade. So when they go to sixth grade at, like, Booth, are those kids yeah, there's, being taken back yes, yes, a level? Actually, so what's uh, the... I didn't get into all the details on STEM, but uh, the, uh, uh, we will not only add additional STEM sites at the elementary level, but we are creating protocols that ensure that those kids are picked up as they get to middle school and where instruction in those areas is, uh, is, is supported and expanded. Uh, and there's already strategies in place to ensure that the kids that are finishing up now at Clark Creek this year, that when they you know, move on to uh, Booth, uh, that uh, you know, it's not going to be a case of uh, them uh, you know, being out in the cold. Uh, there certainly needs to be continuation. And you know, we've already got some continuation at the high school level. You know, by the time you get there, you've got honors courses, you've got AP courses, and so on. But at the middle school level, uh, you know, we are making sure that there are protocols in place there as well. Did you all learn something today? Yes. Thank you.